Hey, what is up guys? Tyler here with Secure Team. I have got an amazing new discovery for you guys today. And besides that, I'm sure something else you're all finding mind-blowing right now is the fact that I've uploaded another video within just hours of uploading the first one. And you're thinking to yourselves, what's going on? What type of sorcery is this? Well, there's just a, a lot of cool things to talk about, and I'm kind of changing things up, the way I do things. Um, for a while now, you've noticed probably that I, you know, most of my videos that I upload are around 20 minutes or more, uh, or about 20 minutes. And, you know, from now on, no matter what the topic is, I'm just going to post a video on it. It doesn't matter if the video is 5 minutes, 10 minutes, or 20 minutes. Um, I just want to get these videos out. If there's something interesting I want you guys to see, I don't want to have to lump it in with a 20-minute video, which takes forever to edit, takes forever to get out. I just want to be able to post videos whenever I feel like it, whenever I find something cool. So they may be short, they may be long. The point is, we'll be able to get information out to you guys faster, and you won't have to wait, possibly days, for one single video to come out. So... This first discovery that I want to show you guys today uh, was originally posted on by Scott Waring over at the UFOSightingsDaily.com website. And he posted on this a very, very anomalous finding on the planet Mercury. Now, we have talked about Mercury in the past and the fact that, well, Mercury is just rarely spoken about by the space agencies. There has been a question of whether there is a reason why planets like Mercury are rarely spoken about and that maybe that's because they don't want anyone's attention focusing on, you know, maybe Mercury is where it's at. And we have seen a lot of anomalous structures on Mercury and um, a lot of people believe that NASA is putting our attention to other planets, making us think that, hey, that's where the activity is, but it's really on Mercury and you never hear much about it. So we have this new finding here uh, of what Scott over at UFO Sightings Daily, uh, called an entrance. And uh, he found it on this image here. We're looking at the surface of Mercury. I'll put the link to this image down in the video description. And if you look to the very right of the image, uh, slightly below the middle line here, you will see what looks like a large black rectangular entrance, or a doorway, as Scott called it. And you'll notice that nowhere else in this picture are any of these uh, rectangular black marks. So it's very unlikely that this is a glitch or something like that. And furthermore, image glitches are much more sharp than this object. They're much more sharp and you can definitely tell when you have a, an artifact in the image processing versus something else. So you're seeing a zoomed in shot of this object. And as I looked at this, and I took a really good look, it became clear to me that this is not an entrance at all. In fact, it's something much more magnificent when you think about it. This here, my friends, this big black rectangle, this is a shadow. So then you ask, where's the shadow coming from and what is casting such a large, long shadow? And that, my friends, is this large rectangular object monolith looking structure towering up above the surface right here that is casting the shadow if you look at this image you'll notice that the sun is shining down over the planet from the top of the screen so as you're looking at all of these craters you'll notice that the top inside rims are all in shadow because the sun is not reaching them whereas the bottom rims are fully immersed in sunlight and all of the shadows are facing in the same direction. So what we have here is a very tall rectangular object, again, monolith, that is standing up over the surface, casting this perfect rectangular shadow. And fellas, this thing is big. So I'm gonna prove it to you even further. So let's zoom in, let's zoom in as close as we can get and I'm gonna show you that this is a structure that this is a shadow being cast by a massive rectangular building or monolith. So we're zooming in here, and I want you to look closely. You can clearly see the top of this building, this rectangular structure. You can see its four corners. You can see the sunlight reflecting off of it. 
and you'll notice that the top of it is not quite as illuminated as the rest of the surroundings that are directly in view of the sun, just as you would expect a large building. So the sun is hitting the top of this thing at a strange angle where it's not as bright, but you can see it. You can see this rectangular structure. You can see its four corners and you can see this elongated shadow that matches up perfectly. And this is just mind blowing. And we can only imagine how tall and large this structure, this object, whatever it is, has to be miles likely. But it is a structure. I've looked at enough of these photographs, whether it be lunar photographs, virtually every moon or planet that we've ever gotten a probe to, I have analyzed over the years. I know how shadows work, as well as natural formations react to the sunlight. And as you guys are seeing, this is clearly a large rectangular building. The top and front of it is being hit by the sun. The back of the structure is in darkness. And we have this very long shadow being cast down on the surface behind it. So now you may be asking, well, is there any proof that these large rectangular monoliths have been found anywhere else? Well, I'm glad you asked that because we have indeed found them elsewhere. We have found them on the moon. We have also found them on Mars, as well as Phobos, which is a very anomalous moon that orbits around the planet Mars. You're seeing images of those monoliths here, towering up above the surface, perfect, sharp cut square or rectangle, almost look, they look like large blocks towering up above the surface. If you've ever seen the film 2001 A Space Odyssey, which is an awesome film directed by Stanley Kubrick, if you haven't seen it, I highly suggest you do, the film takes place around these black monoliths that they are finding. They find one on the moon, they find one orbiting Jupiter, and they realize that these monoliths are alien in nature and that they are some sort of beacon that is sending a signal or sending information back to an alien source somewhere out in space. And we've also found many more anomalous structures on Mercury. We're going to go through some images here showing you what we found. Um, there have been these strange egg-shaped objects that have been found sitting in craters on Mercury. We have found these very long, almost airplane looking structures sitting in craters, that image you're seeing here. And you guys tell me if this looks natural. As far as possible entrances go, we have found these large openings sitting in the middle of craters like the image you're seeing here. Opening, you know, like, like a large entrance in the mouth of this boulder or pile of rocks here. We've seen objects flying up from the surface of Mercury, as you're seeing in this image here. And as you discover evidence like this, you really do start to wonder if there has been a, a, a media blackout of sorts surrounding planets like Mercury. Venus is another planet, again, seldom spoken about. And so, we'll go back to this image here. I will put the link to it down in the video description. Kudos to Scott Waring for bringing it to my attention to begin with. But again, this is no entrance. This is a very large, artificial-looking, rectangular structure, building, monolith, whatever you want to call it, sitting on planet Mercury, and it's an amazing find. Download the image, take a look for yourself. The object is there. It's plain as day. So, amazing, amazing stuff. Now, in other news, we have some new footage that was just sent over a couple of hours ago of an airliner out of Brazil that came in contact with a UFO that actually caused some very noticeable damage to the underbelly of the aircraft. So check this out and we'll talk more in just a second. Alright, so this was sent over to me, and um, 
through the translation posted by the video uploader, what we can tell so far is that this airplane was flying over Brazil. Now, before it left, they did their pre-flight checkups where they check the plane, make sure it's, everything's in order, and it was confirmed that these damages were not on the plane. So these damages occurred while they were in the air flying 70,000 feet above the earth. They discovered them after they landed and then they found out through talking to the pilots of the airliner that they had come in contact with a glowing object that passed directly under them as they were heading for Governador Valadares, which is a municipality of Brazil. Now, the object was originally seen at 8 a.m. over Recife. Then, uh, about five minutes later, was spotted again by this pilot over Governador Valadares, um, which is a difference of nearly 3,000 kilometers. So, how this object crossed this distance in less than five minutes is mind-boggling. So he said he saw the aircraft, noticed this bright flash, and then watched as it blasted underneath the plane, causing, causing it to tremble as it was beneath the aircraft. The plane later arrived in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and that is when they noticed the damage to the bottom of the plane. Um, again, this is all the information we know as of right now. I'm uh, just now getting the info on this so i will be posting updates as i learn more i'm uh, attempting to get in contact with one of the pilots on the plane so i can get some more information um but yeah we have seen and heard many times about these sightings uh, ufos following or shadowing aircraft we've done countless videos on it shown pieces of footage imagery we have talked about even back in world war ii when both German and American pilots were shadowed by these objects. They called them Foo Fighters. And we have seen pieces of footage like you're seeing here, where we have seen disc-shaped objects passing by planes, changing direction, you know, completely breaking the laws of gravity as we know it. But we have yet to really get any concrete or clear evidence of damage to some of these aircraft when these UFOs come too close and that is what we have here now there was a, a similar story to this one that occurred back in 2013 when the nose of a chinese passenger jet was completely smashed in by an object that is still to this day yet to be identified you're seeing some images of that plane here and what we know is that this airline was at about 26,000 feet the pilot heard a loud bang and then said that the plane, quote, struggled to perform. So they had to make an emergency landing. This was a Boeing 757. They found out that the nose cone was severely dented, uh, but they ruled out that this was a bird or an animal of any kind due to the fact that there was no blood, there was no feathers, there was no nothing to indicate that this was a bird. Experts who led the investigation also confirmed that it was likely not a bird, uh, but that suspicions were definitely raised that the aircraft was hit by some sort of foreign object. Now, what we do know is that a week after this happened, reports came to light that one of the pilots who was in the plane witnessed a silver disc flying near the plane just before the impact occurred. Uh, so, again, there is plenty of evidence that has shown that we are not alone, especially in our skies. Some have said that they're here simply to watch us, to study us, to get a look at our technology, to do reconnaissance. Whatever the reason, they definitely are not shy about playing chicken with our aircraft. So again, let me know what you guys think about this. I will update you guys on any new info. Uh, UFO damages the bottom of this plane over Brazil. Things are just getting stranger and stranger. So, big thanks to the viewer who sent this over. Now, lastly, and before we end today's video, I want to address uh, a new story that has been hitting the web and gone viral. It was actually posted in a video that's just came out by a very suspicious channel. And maybe you guys have seen it, maybe you haven't, but there, this new story, the report goes that there was a French female astronaut who recently attempted to kill herself. 
she attempted suicide, uh, and while she was being restrained when they had found her, it's reported that she had screamed the words, quote, Earth must be warned. Uh, so this came from uh, the renowned scientist and France's first female astronaut, Claudie Hegner. Uh, and so uh, this report was posted by uh, a UFO channel that was actually just created this year. I'm not going to give the name out because I don't believe it deserves any more views than it's already getting. Uh, but you guys have probably seen it. You'll probably be able to find it very easily uh, due to the fact that it's gaining a lot of views. Um, it's posting these four and five minute videos of these bogus, nonsense, hoaxed news stories. The videos are comprised of nothing more than a slideshow of different pictures uh, being narrated by a female computer voice. And that's all it is. And that's all the person who runs the channel posts. Uh, so many of you guys are asking about this uh, French astronaut and whether she really screamed that the earth needs to be warned about something and i'm telling you guys right now the story is complete nonsense this story is actually from 2008 and apart from the fact that this woman really did attempt suicide uh everything else about the story is bullshit uh she never screamed that the earth must be warmed um it, it never happened so when this story was first reported in 2008 by scientific america a well-known online hoaxer by the name of Sorka Fall took the story and added on the part about her screaming that the earth must be warned. Uh, if you don't know, Sorka Fall is supposedly this Russian scientist slash journalist who operates the website whatdoesitallmean.com. And he is well-known as one of the internet's very first um, news report hoaxers, where he just creates nonsense out of thin air, whether it be about UFOs, aliens attacking Earth, um, the Earth ending, you know, whatever the fantastical story, um, he's one of the first guys to put out these things. So, basically what this channel and what channels like this are doing uh, is that they are basically going back to websites uh, like the one I just mentioned, finding all of these stories that are from 2008, 2007, 2009, and then turning them into these little four and five minute videos where they show you a bunch of pictures and then narrate it with this computer voice. And then they post it and they get three or 400,000 views and then everybody starts emailing me wondering if it's real or not. So I'm telling you right now, stay away from this channel and channels like it especially the ones that are narrated by computer voices. So, believe me, if there is a breaking story and Secure Team hasn't posted on it, then you can probably be sure it's nonsense, and that is likely the reason we haven't posted on it. Uh, so, for everything else, stick right here with us. If any of you guys have your own footage or stories you'd like me to report on, don't hesitate to email me. My contact info is down below. And be sure to follow me on Facebook and Twitter, where I constantly post updates uh, about when the next video is going to be coming up. Uh, and uh, I just enjoy chit-chatting with you guys. I'm always on there. So, again, thanks for stopping by. Be sure to hit that like button and share on your way out. And I'll see you all back very soon. Stay safe, guys. Thank you.